Hi, my name is Sierra Galley, and welcome to part four of my little mini series on why I believe gun reform is ideal for the US. For this part, I'm going to be going into gun policies that have been shown to be effective to some degree in preventing lives loss and reducing Americans' quality of life. The first one I'm going to be talking about is gun buyback programs. While they're not shown to be the most effective, they are doing something in my opinion. They are getting guns off the street. They're not doing them in a very abrupt way that makes people upset and they're doing something. They're getting guns off the street, unwanted weapons that could cause harm had they been used. And if you're wondering how much you can get for an assault weapon, um, you can get $500 for turning that in, which I would say is a pretty good deal. The next one I'm going to be talking about is stand your ground laws that are also known as shoot first laws. These are available in nearly half the states and they cover um, you if you're in that situation and are in no way able to get to safety, retreat, and protects your right to defend yourself in that kind of event. As a person who grew up with guns in their household, I strongly believe in child access prevention laws. From the ages of about like 11 or 13-ish, I was already able to gain access to weapons in my household. Which is true for nearly half of the children who have guns in their home. People don't think the worst can happen to them until it does. But essentially, those types of laws put blame onto the parents and give them some kind of responsibility to be taken for their child having access to their guns in their household. And last of all, the most effective way to prevent gun violence is assault weapon bans or overall gun bans. They have worked in Brazil, New Zealand, the UK, Australia. Why can't they work in the US? Purely to change the quality of American lives and to prevent lost lives.